Hello, today I'm joined by Frankie Foster to go through Wednesday's seven races on the ITV7 free-to-play game that sees five races from the second day of the Cheltenham Festival and two from Huntington. And hopefully we can come up with some winners to help you land the £200,000 jackpot on offer for Wednesday's game. By joining our free-to-play ITV7 league, you'll be able to compete throughout the Cheltenham Festival for a £100 cash prize each day, alongside over a million in total jackpot prizes up for grabs across the week and an extra £500,000 on the final day of the festival if managing to land the winner of the Gold Cup. So, Frankie, we'll get straight into it. On day two of the Cheltenham Festival, first race of the day, Ballymore Novices Hurdle at half past one. And what a race this is to kickstart day two. Who are you going with in this one? I think you've got to keep it simple. If we're trying to find a winner, you've got to keep it simple in Sir Gerhard. Um, he was favourite for both the Supreme and the Ballymore at one point, you know, declared for the Ballymore. We'll, we'll go into the Ballymore, we'll know that odds on. Um, soon after, won his Cheltenham bumper last year, has been very, very good since, has done little wrong. And I just think, yeah, keep it straightforward. If we're trying to find a winner, I've always kind of put a shout for three stripe light each way. But on this, we are trying to find the winner. And Sir Gerhard is very hard to oppose. Well, just like Tuesday's show, we're starting Wednesday off with the same shout because, yeah, I can't see yeah, us, the winners, go, the winners in coach, you can't see past uh, Sir Gerhard as well. Uh, the seven-year-old, he was such a smart bumper horse winning the champion bumper, obviously. Maybe got away with it in that race under a great ride from Rachel Blackmore, but still showed plenty of, plenty of ability. Since he's gone over hurdles this year, his win um, at Leperstown over Christmas was brilliant from the front. And then last time out, uh, the Dublin race festival was even better, pulling away from Three Strike Life, who's a very good horse. Um, a lot of people have questioned whether he will stay the two mile five in the Ballymore, but from the way Mullins has been speaking about him, he can stay any trip early. <laughs> yeah. um, and even though the price is short now, we want to get off to the, to the start with a winner. And I think he'll be a very, very popular winner indeed if Sigurhard was. Yeah, for the sure. There'd be, a, there'd be a big cheer. If he does yeah, well. definitely. So in agreement for the first, let's see what we can do in the second. So this one, we go to Huntington, where they have two races on the ITV7 game for Wednesday. And we go with the 13.50. It's a Class 5 handicap chase over two mile four. Um, Frankie, who did you come down on in this one? It's a tricky one, to be honest. Uh, you know, there's all sorts of varying angles from experienced handicappers to less exposed ones. The two I liked was a night in Lambourne, um, trained by Ben Pauling. But again... We're trying to find winners and I'm trying to keep it simple. To have John Joe train an experienced handicapper in Jolly Maker away from Cheltenham up at Huntington on the first day with a seven pound claimer on it. <laughs> it seems too obvious to me. <laughs> so uh, I think this horse could be well handicapped. Don't they? You know, it's to be trying to get getting the winner's enclosure elsewhere this week as well. It's not too uncommon to see that. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm keeping it straightforward and going with another favourite with Jolly Maker. Well, we two feel exactly two. the same. Two from two. <laughs> I think you are you are actually right with that stance that it's, it's some trainers do actually look at a bit of value away from Cheltenham because everyone's focusing on there where the bookmakers might give you a bit of value elsewhere. So, but what also is good about Jolly Maker, I find he loves it around Huntington. If you actually look, he's ran at the track three times during his, uh, during his career. Won twice and finished third on his other one. So, some really good form. His latest two runs have seen him um, back to form in a big way, finishing third over course and distance, and then winning at Hereford over two mile five for Mark 97 last time. He's only up four pounds uh, for this race. Um, and he's got a cracking chance to make it back Sorry, to back wins. Yeah. So, very, very simple from both of us. Keep trying to make it two from two. Let's see if we can make it three from three. Um, <laughs> We're going back over to Cheltenham for the 2.10. Uh, Brown advisory Norris's chase. The first grade one over fences on the Wednesday. Um, it's a very competitive race, as always. Who have we gone with, Frankie? Hopefully we're going for jackpot. Three out of three, maybe. Um, Brave Man's Game, I, I, I think, still is slightly overpriced and discredited in the market. This horse, it's, you know, I think it was, was the third in last year's Ballymore. Um, there's lots of questions. Will he get up the hill and so on and so on? But... He's a different animal over fences and a very, very good chaser. Has done little wrong at all. And, you know, long press in behind, classy, exciting, but I don't think quite up to the standard and the speed of Brave Man's game. Ahoy, senor. Questions, you know, different track, sharper. I just think Brave Man's game was too good for him that he won't catch him. So um, I'm staying loyal. And I think I think this slightly discredited it around two to one, albeit a favourite. Brave Man's game's got a serious engine. He cruises, he jumps, he does everything right to win a three-miler at Cheltenham. 
Uh, I'm afraid I've got to ruin the party here. No. I've, I've, I've got, I've got a, I do like Brave Man's game. I respect Brave Man's game. And I think you're definitely right. I think it could, could be a shorter price, definitely. And, you, and you'd have no qualms about that. But I just think Lahom Press is a very special horse for Venetia Williams. And I, I just think he's got a really, really good chance. If you actually look at his four chasing starts, he was a, he was a fair hurdler. Like he had, only had two starts. But if you look what he's done over fences since, he's been pretty breathtaking, getting better and better with each run. And over his four runs, he's won by a combined 50 lengths. That's the sign of a good horse for me. <laughs> um, I'd love to a, see Charlie Deutsch in the winner's enclosure as well. No, oh, definitely, definitely. If you, if you look where he started at Exeter over two mile three, he won that. They went over two mile five. Into the Dipper, um, won by 10 lengths, beating a nice horse in the Glancing Queen, who's got a cracking chance in the plate on the Thursday if she goes. Yeah. Or, but... If, if she, he was looking to land a grain one on us last time out in the Silly Isles and then went up to hack up by 21 lengths. Yes, he does have to step up three miles for the first time, but... I think it'd be a problem, the way it travels. I, I I, yeah, the way it travels, I don't think it'd be no problem. And I think, it, even though Brave Man's game is probably still value, I think Lahom Press is even better value, personally. And I think those two, and with the Hoy Senor, will be close near the finish. Yeah. But I think this, this lad's a bit more progressive than the two of them, personally, for me. And I'm going with Lahom Press. It's an exciting one. All very oh, yeah. good jumpers as well. And it's actually nice to see they're all English. It's yeah. From English. Trainers, so <laughs> it makes a change, eh? Isn't it? Well, I think we've got, got a big chance in that one, haven't we? <laughs> um, so this, the last race on ITV7 free to play game on Wednesday from Huntingdon is the Class 5 Mayor's Handicap Hurdle. Um, again, quite a tricky one when you're looking away from Charlton this week. But Frankie, who did you go for? Yes, it was the Skelton train. I'm just loading up to get the name right. Fame and glory or of some sort. Um, global fame and glory. One I think maybe slightly well handicapped. Seven seven pound claimer um, on board. And to be honest, I think maybe uh, they got given a mark of 106 on his first handicap. Retain that mark. Um, but comes in with the seven pound claimer on after being pretty impressive or running to at least better RPRs in his novice hurdles than a lot of these. So he did get not punished for it, but he got given the fair rating of 106 to start with off of being slightly better than some of these in his novice hurdles. He has retained that for coming fourth, reasonable performance, but they've stuck the claimer on board in what I think is maybe slightly weaker company here. Um, so given that, I'd probably give him a chance if, uh, who is the claimer riding? Tristan Doe can give him a good spin. Yeah, definitely got a chance. I've gone slightly different. I've gone for rain fee for Henry Oliver. Um, looks to be a nice mare, put up close to a career best. The last time out at Leicester over two mile four on soft ground when chasing home, uh, cut the mustard for poor Nichols, who's not a bad horse, in a class mm. three mare handicap chase. She moves back over hurdles today, off six pound lower, which sees her off a mark of 104 now, dropping down into a class five race as well. I think she's been really well placed to go close mm. if she can transfer her form over fences back over to hurdles. And I just think from looking at her mark now to what it is and looking at the races she's been in, she's got a big chance. So the Coral Cup uh, over two mile five is the next race we're going to discuss. And this <laughs> is a pretty much a minefield for a lot of punters. <laughs> but you, where do you think the value lies in this one? Oh, God. Um, well, I was hoping my Maximus would run, but you know, go to the Banimal. Um, So that was my selection out the window. The one I'm going with, to be honest, a bit of a money horse, a bit of a hype horse, a bit of a preview horse um, of recent weeks in Drop the Anchor. I just think this is just a classic kind of handicap target and Cheltenham target. You look last year, they had a crack in the county hurdle off of what's three pounds lower, I think 140. And now they've got a three pound claimer on as well. So effectively six pounds for their last challenge in the county last year, coming into the Coral Cup um, after a, a steady season <laughs> to keep that mark where it is. <laughs> and they'll be coming here in good form uh, to give it a good crack. Yeah, I think it just stands out as one that really is trying to have a go at, at, at winning a handicap like this. And um, 140 with a three or 143 with three pound claimer on board is definitely um, a mark where you're able to win this race. Yeah, definitely got a really, really big chance. And I was very close to joining you there, but I've gone for another JP horse, uh, Camprond for Philip Hobbs. Um, this horse has seemed over the last few days to really attract some market support now into about nine, 10 to one from 14s before. And 
this horse come from like pretty much like Jock the Anchor has been set up for this race, I think definitely. Smart hurdle last term, winning at Taunton and finishing a narrow second in a 22 run handicap uh, over hurdles at Aintree's Grand National Meeting. He carried on racing through the summer, but then was given a small break, uh, came back in September and we finished in second at Stratford before going to Chepstow and winning the Grade 2 Persian War Novices Hurdle. It was always a nice race to win at the start of the season. Sent to Cheltenham after that. He won an easy win. It was an easy winner over, uh, in a three-runner novices hurdle over uh, two mile four. That set him up perfectly for a crack at the Great Wood. And if you look at the Great Wood, the form of that race has been absolutely brilliant. Um, and Campron was back in fourth that day off the same mark of 140, which he runs off in this race. He hasn't been seen since that race. Um, he's shown he handle, handles Cheltenham. Uh, he's only going up a furlong, I think, off his mark of 140. He's purposely not been raced to keep his mark for this event. And I think JP's got a huge chance of winning this race, like he has done in most years. I was going to say, we, we, with, with two JP horses, surely one of us is, is in with a chance. <laughs> you know, so, but you've also got the shunter in there, who was a surprise, yeah. I thought. And he, he's also got a big chance for JP. So, yeah. look, drop the anchor view, come from for me. I think we won't be far away. And hopefully they'll both hit the frame or one of them will win. Um, moving on now for the 3.30, the championship race of the day. And arguably could be the race of the festival. It's the champion chase. Um, Frankie, Shishkin, Enegamin, Shaq and Pulsoir, who are we going with? Again, we're trying to find winners. <laughs> Shishkin hasn't been a backable bet for me. Uh, too short in what is so competitive, like such a good champion chase. But if I had to just tell you prices aside, who wins this race, I think Shishkin has the best chance. Um, I know Enegamin's only got a length to find and, you know, it wouldn't be a huge surprise if Enegamin won. Um, Shaq and Boussoir has been discredited on his English form, but classy, classy horse on his day. Um, and another one that if he won, you know, if he won by five lengths and just went off and, and won well, it wouldn't be a huge surprise. Um, he won't get into a battle up the hill. We know that. So if they're all coming down to the last there or thereabouts, that's where I'm siding 100% with Shishkin to, to have that little bit extra up the hill. Um, so I am sticking with the favourite. I watched back his uh, last year's article and that, uh, kind of further nailed me to Team Shishkin because it's just so impressive how he gets around Cheltenham. Um, it'll be hard to beat, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely. And I think what you just said at the start of explaining that was brilliant because with the ITV7 game, you may, you may be not looking at from a punting angle of prices. You're not maybe looking to see oh, if that's at that price, I want to back it ahead of this. Because with this, you're just looking for seven winners in a row to try and win the jackpot. And I think you're absolutely bang on. And we've gone with Shishkin as well because he's an absolute superstar, isn't he? When his last 10 races included all, all these grade ones, Supreme Novices Erdl, Arkle Novices Chase, Maggle Novices Chase, when the grade two Desert Orchid and last time out when the Clarence House Chase. Any other horse you like in a race should be saying, yeah, wins. But obviously yeah. the question mark with Enigamini, he takes on again, Shaq and Paul Soir, even Nubi Negra, they're all really, really good horses. Mm -hmm. But if he's coming to the last or the second last and he's still creeping around them, no one will beat that horse up the hill. He's yeah, just got so many gears. Um, and I do feel sorry for Mullins. I don't think he's ever won the champion chase. And no. he's a two <laughs> day you know. I know. And, the, and this just gets in there. I think I he's he's the British banker for many, isn't he? Um yeah, and sure. hopefully, hopefully he can do it for, for Britain and hopefully he can do it for us. So yeah. the, the last race uh, on the ITV7 free to play game on Wednesday. Is the Glen Park class cross country chase? Um, Frankie, who are we going with? Cool. So it's hard to go against Tiger Roll. Um, I feel like a, a traitor, but it's just the forecast rain um, that really worries me. And I, you know, if it, who knows what the weather will be like when they go off and what the track will be like when they go off. But it, it's a massive worry for Tiger Roll. And it will play into the strengths of a lot of these other horses. Um, I, I, I couldn't be too strong on any outside of Tiger Roll if it's a little bit um, soft and, uh, you know, not, not the best ground. But down to work, I just think it's an interesting entry. And I don't know, you know, it's a graded horse. All he does is run in grade ones. Um, it's a very interesting entry. But is it as a result of them not really knowing what to do with him? Or is it as a result of they think, actually, they can place him here and win? Um, I'm hoping the latter. And if he jumps and gets round, because it's, you know, it's a tricky course to get round. I'm not sure if he's run in a cross country before. I haven't actually looked. I wouldn't have thought so. The first one, this is first, first one. First yeah. Um, so yeah. that would be a question mark. But 
you know, jumping wise, engine wise, he's a great one horse. So it's, it's definitely an interesting entry. And, and given the forecast, I'm sadly <laughs> going to go against the Tiger uh, with Delta Work. See, this is where horse racing is a great sport because us, like us two, we can have the same opinions, we can have different opinions. And for me, the reason why I can't have Delta Work and the reason why I'm going to stick with Tiger Roll, I can understand the grounds of worry. I'm hoping that that rain doesn't come as much as they say. So yeah. I do think it'll be a hindrance to Tiger Roll. But for me, if Gigginstown are saying this is Tiger Roll's last race and they're putting another Gigginstown horse up against it, surely they're let, like it's prime for Tiger Roll to win. If that was yeah. to beat Tiger Roll on its last ever run. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is what I can't get my head around. Yeah, this is what I really can't understand is, is the entry. Um, yeah. I just... You don't know the thought process, do you? Because, like you said, imagine imagine a one and two, but down to work was one and Tiger Roll with two. It'd just be bonkers. I think the whole place would go silent. I just I just think the whole <laughs> town would be stupid. But I tell you what, if if I was having having a look in the future, I think Delta works the best for the cross country next year. Yeah. If they're going if they're going down this route and Tiger Roll won't be there next year, you can just see Delta work filling his into his like his shoes. Yeah. But yeah. I, I, I'm going with Tiger Roll. For this, I just think he could get one of the biggest receptions ever seen at a race course. If he went on to land his what fourth victory in this race, sixth Cheltenham yeah. Festival win, he's a dual Grand National winner. He took the hearts of many, many punters. Um, he really could bring the house down. Look, he's a twelve-year-old now. This race, he's made for horses that are, are slightly older, but he just loves this event. He loves this track. He knows exactly what he's doing when he gets out in front. And look, if he's let go again and like the easy land, we don't know about this Prengard, how good he is. Yeah. And as you say, Delta Works is a very good horse. But if he's in the same form as what he was when he won the race last year, I think he's very, very tough to beat. And I think it'd be great. A, there'll be some great stories this week. There was, yeah. There's a couple of old timers, isn't there? Paisley Park, Tiger Roll. Daisy Bark when he's stuck all like him, but I think Tiger Roll would bring the house down if he won. Yeah. Hopefully, um, he can do the job. But Frankie, we've gone through all seven there. Hopefully, we found some winners. Thanks Fingers for all crossed. your insight and selections um, for Saturday's <laughs> ITV Seven Free to Play game. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to the Winners Encoded channel with more videos coming up throughout the week to do with the ITV Seven League. Um, and also remember to get involved in the free to enter ITV7 competition. Get set up into our league across the week to be in with a chance of winning big cash prizes, including £100 each day and over a million in jackpot prizes. So good luck to everyone who gets involved. And hopefully me and Frankie have helped you out there. And cheers again, Frankie.